हेलो 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 एम आई ऑडिबल टू अ यस पिमिली यू आर ऑडिबल ओके थैंक यू फॉर कंफर्मिंग right now i can see our speakers had joined we'll wait for a few seconds to let our principal of our college join the session and we'll start shortly I request our host to kindly make our principal sir as a co-host thus sir hello is it i'm audible to everyone someone yes 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 call again later yes a good evening and warm greetings everyone uh without any much delay uh i would like to start the today's session uh, we are already uh, running late we have already uh yes a uh, half an hour delay has gone so without any delay let's start today's uh session once again warm greetings i take the honor and pleasure to extend a hearty welcome to everyone respected principal dr sobhya sachi mahanta sir vice principal dr rena handik ma'am iqac coordinator dr surajit sekya sir of gorgon college and respected faculty members of gorgon college and my dear participants we are honored to have such a distinguished research person dr meghali borwa and dr ramzan ahmed joining us today in this two day invited lectures on biological sciences myself 
Dr. Pimili Langthasa, Assistant Professor in the Department of Geology, Gorgon College. On the behalf of organizing committee, takes the pleasure to welcome you all in this two day invited lectures on biological series organized by the Department of Geology and IQSC, Gorgon College, Himalaburi, Assam. To begin the workshop, I would now like to request our eminent academician and principal of our Gorgon College, Dr. Sabesachi Mahanta sir, to present our inaugural speech. Sir, please do the honor. Hello. Hello. Hello, principal sir. There is some technical errors. There is a technical glitch towards our end. We'll begin within a short time. I request all the participants to bear with us. Within a few minutes, we'll start the program.
Hello, sir. You are not audible. Hello, Pimili. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right now, you are audible, sir. Uh, uh, now audible? I am okay. 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 Very good evening to you all. Dr. Rina Hendik, Honorable Vice Principal and Head of Head of the Department of Department of Zoology of Gurgaon College, Coordinator of this invited lecture, Dr. Pimili Langtasa, Assistant Professor in the Department of Zoology, Gurgaon College, Co-Convenor Dr. Rosmi Dotto, Assistant Professor in the Department of Zoology of Gurgaon College. Today's resource person, Dr. Meghali Burwa, Assistant Professor in the Department of Zoology, Nehu Shillong. Dr. Surajit Saikya, Coordinator IQAC of our college, Dr. Nilutpal Sutia, and all the faculty, member, faculty members, uh, students, and research scholars. Uh, at the very outset, I would like to welcome you all to the event, the invited lecture on biological sciences that has been organized by the Department of Zoology in collaboration with IQAC of Gorgao College. I offer my sincere thanks and gratitude to Dr. Uh, Meghali Burwa, who has consented and has joined us as resource person of today's, uh, today's program. And I would like to appreciate the endeavor that has been taken by the organizers, especially the Department of Zoology and the IQSC. They have been uh, doing a lot of hard work to organize such type of programs, not only this time, they have been uh, relentlessly, they have been organizing such type of programs so that our students can be benefited, our teachers can be benefited, the research scholars can be benefited as Gorgon College has been doing hard working, hard continuously working to promote and uh, promote the, uh, the 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 research in the uh, in higher education and also to enlighten our students in various fields, upcoming fields, so that that can be they can be benefited uh, benefited most. Uh, so I would again I would like to offer my Sincere thanks, and I appreciate the endeavor by the organizers to organize this uh, invite uh, this invited lecture on biological science. And today's resource person is uh, Dr. Meghali Borwa. She would be she would be speaking on mass extin extin extinction uh, events. So I hope the event would be very uh, uh, beneficial for our students. And I hope this uh, uh, program would be a big success. And with this few words, I declare the session open. And I, offer, uh, I, 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 I really regret for the inconvenience occurred due to some technical errors. Uh, with this few words, I declare the session open. And wish you all the very best. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Thank sir, you, sir, for the speech. Uh, and for your informative talk, highlighting the importance of the lecture so that the students can be benefiting and always being a, our supportive and backbone to organizing such programs. Uh, now, without much any delay, to our resource person today has already been introduced by our eminent uh, academician, our principal, sir. Uh, before starting the session, I would like to introduce the in uh, the speakers to our participants dr meghali borwa is currently working as an assistant professor at the department of geology geology northeastern hill university meghalaya she has an excellent in her academic career she did her phd from assam university silchar her area of specialization includes sedimentology and stratigraphy she published her research paper in many national and international journal, which includes Journal of Art System Science, Springer Nature, Applied Sciences, Arabian Journal of Geosciences, Journal of Geological Society of India, Geological Jour Journal, and many more. She is also parallelly actively working as a faculty in geology 
Geological Field Program, ONGC, Association of Petroleum Geologists Chapter. Now, I would like to hand over the session to our speaker. Over to you, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, definitely. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Sarbasasi Mahanta, sir, uh, for your kind words. And I also like to thank the organizing committee for giving me this opportunity to share my knowledge with the students. So without spending uh, much time, I'm going to uh, discuss uh, about the mass extinction events. Uh, Is it visible? Yes. Yes, it is visible. Okay. So uh, uh, first I'm going to uh, discuss uh, about what is mass extinction. So as we all know that uh, the average lifespan of a human being is 80 to 100 years. Likewise, every species on Earth has a lifespan and it varies from species to species. So let us imagine this species A had a lifespan of this much period in terms of million years. Then species B had a lifespan of this much period. Then species C had a longer lifespan of this much period. And species D had a smaller our uh, lifespan of this much period and the species E this much and the species F this much period. So remember here the lifespan in terms of, of million years. So when we try to plot this data in a binary diagram, we have two axes here. One is X and the another one is the Y axis. So X axis, it is representing time period which divided into uh, million years and the y-axis representing the number of species. So x species, uh, sorry, x-axis, it is divided into 10 million years, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60 million years. So just look at this point, this first pin. In the first pin, we have two spaces here. Then in the second pin, we have this five spaces here. Then in the third pin, we have six spaces here. And in the fourth pin, we have three spaces here. And in the fifth pin, we have only one spaces here. Okay. So when we try to analyze this data, we have same two axes, that is X and the Y axis. So in the first pin, we got two spaces. Then in the second pin, we got five spaces. Then in the third pin, we got six spaces. Then in the fourth pin, we got three spaces. And in the fifth pin, we got only one species. So when we try to join these points, we will get a curve like this. So when we, uh, means if we try to interpret this uh, graph, this indicates that just consider this portion. This indicates the maximum diversity of life during this period. And after this, there is a drastically decline diversity. So uh, they are drastically declined. So that means this is the sharp decline. So the sharp decline or loss of, loss of biodiversity in the paleontological record within a short period of geological time, it is called as a mass extinction. So in general, mass extinction, it is the extinction of a large number of species within a relatively short period of geological time. So that is less than 2.8 million years, which is responsible for the 75% of the world species being lost due to some catastrophic global event or widespread environmental change that occurs 
too rapidly for most species to adapt. It's called mass extinctions. So here I'm going to give you a brief idea about the geological time scale. So geological time scale, it is the calendar for events in the art history. So that means this geological time scale in a simple way, it is the record of events uh, of the art history that is based on the organisms that live in a particular period of time. So there are different components in geological time scale like eon, era, period, just a minute. Okay, so there are different components of geological time scale like the eon, era, period, and the epoch. So eon, it is the broadest unit and uh, the whenever we are going to read the geological time scale, we always start from older to younger. So like Hadean, Archean, and Proterozoic, they are collectively considered Precambrian eon. And the next one is the Phanerozoic eon. So again, the second longest component or the unit of geological time scale is the era. This is Phanerozoic eon divided into Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and the Cenozoic era. So Paleozoic means the old life, Mesozoic means the middle life, and Cenozoic means the new life. So again, this is divided into period and the epoch. That means they are divided into smaller units. So there are five major mass extinction events starting from the older to the younger one. So the oldest one, which is called Ordovician Silurian mass extinction that occurred around 445 million years ago. Then the next one is the Lead Devonian mass extinction that occurred around 365 million years ago. Then the third one, the N Parmian mass extinction that occurred around 252 million years ago. Then the N, uh, N Triassic mass extinction that occurred around 201 million years ago. And the fifth one, this is known as Cretaceous tertiary mass extinction that occurred around 65 million years ago. So, first start with the end Ordovician mass extinction. So, end Ordovician mass extinction it occurs around on uh, 445 million years ago. So, this extinction events, it is also known as Ordovician Silurian mass extinction. And it is considered as a second largest mass extinction, which eliminated roughly 86% of all living beings at that time. So, uh, there are two phases of this extinction event. The first one is the uh, glaciation event and the second one is the uh, heating event. So during this Ordovician period, uh, the abundant uh, plant life, they remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and it causes the global cooling and as a result there is a formation of glaciers and there is a relative drop in the sea level. And later it was followed by the uh, global warming, which causes sea level rising conditions. And the combination of these two changes in their environment, they wiped out nearly 86% of all living beings at that time. So in this Ordovician period or Ordovician mass extinction, the marine organisms, they are mainly affected. It includes the brachiopods, the cephalopods, echinoderms, then greptolites and the trilobites. Then the next mass extinction events is the N. Devonian mass extinction events that occurred around 365 million years ago. So this Devonian, uh, during this Devonian period, there are numerous 
smaller extinction also reported like vivacian extinction and fresnian extinction and the feminian extinctions so this devonian mass extinction that occurred around 365 million years ago that is uh, uh, during this extinction events about 75 percent of life died off uh, during this period and uh, there are numerous theory that is suggested by the uh, different scientists for this extinction event the one theory it suggested that uh, there is an uh, development of the uh, uh, development of the deep roots in the um, land plants and they are responsible for providing in nutrients into the ocean that fed the algae and there is an um, uh, development of the algae or the algal bloom. They uh, uh, consume enormous amount of oxygen and which causes a uh, suffocating condition for some other many species. And the another theory, it also suggests that there is an global cooling took place and resulting glaciation and there is a fall in sea level conditions which leading to the habitat loss. So still in this lead Devonian extinction reason is debated and some of the scientists they believe that the volcanic eruptions were responsible for the decrease in oxygen level in the ocean. So mainly the marine organisms, they affected uh, uh, due to this lead Devonian extinction, like the ammonoids, brachiopods, corals, then some of the jawless fishes, as ostracods and the trilobites. So here, these are the images of the Devonian um, trilobites and the uh, brachiopods. Now, next is the N Permian mass extinction. So, N Permian mass extinction, it is uh, the de deadliest mass extinction event, and it is the largest mass extinction event in the art history. And it occurred around uh, 252 million years ago. And uh, the uh, this uh, Permian Triassic mass extinction events, it is responsible for 95% of life I've uh, died of uh, due to this extinction event. And uh, the volcanic activity in the Siberia, it produces enormous amounts of uh, carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which is a greenhouse gas. And another thing is that the bacteria which uh, thrive on carbon dioxide, uh, the, they produce methane. So both these two, this carbon dioxide and the methane, these two are the greenhouse gases and they are responsible for the global warming. And at that time, the ocean temperature is also increases as much as 8 degrees Celsius. So... Uh, these are the regions for this uh, parmo triassic mass extinctions. So in this extinction uh, events, the 96% of all marine species were killed, then 70% of terrestrial vertebrates were killed. That In this event, the tetrapods are also affected. So the marine organisms like benthic foraminifera, brachiopods, bryozoans, then the echinoderms, they are also affected due to this, this extinction events. Then the next one is the end triassic mass extinction. So this end triassic mass extinctions, it's occurred around 201 million years ago. So end triassic period, uh, uh, during uh, this period, uh, the, the supercontinent Pansia, it uh, combines all the modern continents and it began to split apart. And as a result, when this uh, North America, it is separated from Africa, the Atlantic Ocean is formed. And at that time, there is a uh, volcanic activity on a massive scale, which is, a, uh, which is the region, means there is an introduction of the uh, carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So as a result, due to this uh, 
um, global warming conditions, these extinction events occurred. Now, the marine organisms affected and the tetrapods are also affected due to this is extinction event. Then the next one is the Cretaceous tertiary extinction, which is also known as CATI extinction or KPZ extinction, which occurred uh, uh, around 65 million years ago. So this extinction events, it's related with an extraterrestrial object and where 75% of all species on the planet, including dinosaurs, they went extinct. So uh, during this period, an asteroid that was 10 kilometer in diameter, it hit the Earth at the end of the Cretaceous period. And because of this impact, it produced enormous dust cloud. And this dust cloud greatly reduced the amount of sunlight reaching the Earth's surface. And it prevented the photosynthesis by plants on land and plankton in the ocean. As the plant and the plankton died, extinction expanded up the food chain and eliminating both the herbivores and the carnivores. So in uh, 1978, a group of scientists led by Walter Alvarez of the University of California, they were able to locate the Katy boundary in the layers of limestone near the Dubio, Italy. So in a simple way, this Cretaceous is, is the older one and the tertiary is the younger one. So in between this, the, there is a boundary. That boundary, it is demarcated by thin clay layers. So this extinction events, the evidence of extraterrestrial object uh, is that uh, from this boundary, from this clay layer, uh, the geochemical analysis proved that there is a presence of uh, uh, the rare element like iridium so this iridium, the possible source for this iridium is the basaltic magma. And another uh, um, evidence for this is Katy boundary is dead. The clay layers, it has the high proportion of black carbon that could have originated as soot produced by wildfire set up by an impact. And the second thing is that in this clay layer, in this fine green layer, there is a presence of some resistant mineral like quartz, but that quartz, it shows strain effect, means whenever we are going to identify under the microscope, uh, there is a fractures develop within the quartz. So it also indicates that there is an, uh, means this fractures is developed due to a strain by a large shock. And another evidence of this extraterrestrial impact is that the presence of stesovite. So stesovite, it's a variety, it's a uh, polymorph of quartz, which is in high pressure form. And the mainly we are getting the main source of this stesovite is the meteorite. So uh, the mass extinction, uh, sorry, this uh, Cretaceous tertiary mass, uh, sorry, this Cretaceous tertiary boundary, it's reported in many parts of the world. And in no, from the Northeast India, from this Meghalaya, that's KT boundary, it's reported from this Cherapunji near the Umsurin Q River area. So now I'm going to play a video so you will get some idea about this uh, mass extinction events. So it, it starts from the formation of the art. It's audible. Students? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I would like to interrupt here. Yes. Uh, is it uh, is it the video does has the uh, sound? Yes, of course. Uh, okay. Okay. We okay. Can't... okay. 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 Then um, I will explain. Okay. 
okay it's fine no problem okay so this is showing the first mass extinction events then the second one then this is the third one the deadliest mass extinction event this is the permian mass extinction permian triassic mass extinction then this triassic jurassic mass extinction and the last one the fifth mass extinction that is the cretaceous tertiary mass extinction due to extraterrestrial object so now now the next question is are we living in six mass extinction so definitely yes we are currently living through the six mass extinction and this extinction includes disappearance of large mammals such as woolly mammoth and this extinction events it's occurring at a rapidly increasing rate and there are two main causes for this six mass extinction this is the human hunting and the rapid rising human population so that means the ice ages volcanic eruptions and asteroids they have a new companion that is the human being so this six mass extinction is driven by human activity and according to the living planet report 30% of all land that sustain biodiversity has been converted for food production then the agriculture it is also responsible for 80% of global deforestation and the 70% of the planet fresh water it is used by agriculture purposes and the next one the climate change due to global warming it causes glaciers to melt sea level rise then the species to go extinct and severe weather events such as floods droughts and the hurricanes to increase so how can uh, how you can help protect biodiversity first one consume wisely then second avoid plastics third one go organic and the last one save energy so and the most important thing is that individual action because this small action culminated together that make up the difference so uh, the individual action it may come in many forms like from donating time physical ability as volunteer or donate uh, or donating uh, technical expertise or financial donations or through word of mouth and spreading awareness so these are the important thing to be remember so now next is the practice questions this is for the students so students uh, the so first question is uh, the first mass extinction event occurred about which is the right answer 2100 million years 445 million years 200 million years or 65 million years which one is the correct answer students can unmute yourself and give the answer Students, are we audible? Okay. Most of them, they are asking me now, primly. Yes. Okay. They okay. can understand. So Oh, okay, yeah. so so that yeah. I can speak in Assamese. Okay, to Maluke Kibaholo Bujipala Nehitu Kwamu first. Students, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Paisu, ma'am. Okay. It is that uh, the first mass extinction event occurred about 2,100 million years, 445 million years, 200 million years, and 65 million years. Which one is the correct answer? Ma'am, answer B, 445. Yes, yes, 445 million years. Then the next question is, the Cretaceous tertiary mass extinction is known for Killing of the dinosaurs, leading to loss of 99 of world species, 
being caused by global ice age and killing of all marine life. So which one is the correct answer? Cretaceous tertiary mass extinction. Cretaceous tertiary mass, mass extinction. Cretaceous tertiary mass extinction. Guess for us. Also, a. Uh, yes, killing of the dinosaurs. Okay. Then the question number three: the great dying occurred during the Permian Triassic mass extinction, Triassic Jurassic mass extinction, Ordovician Silurian mass extinction, Late Devonian mass extinction. Great dying. So that means the deadliest mass extinction. Which one is the correct answer? We. Which one? Answer A, Permian Triassic mass extinction. Yes, good. Then the question number four, the present epoch in the art age is, is known as Miocene, Cenozoic, Holocene, Pliocene. The present epoch. Ma'am, option C, Holocene. Yes, good. Then the next one, the question number five, what is the last division of the geological time scale? Era, eon, epoch, period. Which one is the largest division of the geological time scale? Ma'am, answer B. Yes, good. Yon, it's yon. Then the question number six, the last question, which among the following is not an yon? Hadean, Archean, Paleozoic, Proterozoic. Which is not an yon? Answer C, Paleozoic. Yes. So uh, this is all about the mass extinction events. So if you have any question, then you can ask me or you can drop a message in the chat box also. The session is open for discussion. The students, do you have any doubts regarding the topic? You can unmute yourself and put your question forward. Yeah, the epoch bully ko se eon bully ko se buji paisa na ki hoi kida. Question to answer this a buji paisa na. Jodi huru huru bushtu jodi buji na ipua directly question kore bola answer to lolo ba. Yes, student, do you have any questions? So, Bujipa. Hello? At least, topic to do to koise mass extinction, bully ko se mass extinction, bully to Bujipa, Nike hoy.
Sí, hay de 10 o no. Pues sí, para eso, man. কবনি <laughs> different components so the broadest one one then it is father divided era era means it also represents the longer unit but smaller than one okay so this paleozoic one it is divided to three era that is paleozoic mesozoic and cenozoic so in a simple way this paleozoic means old life Mesozoic is the middle life and the Cenozoic is the new life. So again, this era, it is divided into smaller units. So see, for example, this Paleozoic era, it is divided into Cambrian, Ordovician, Silurian, Devonian, Carboniferous, and Parmian period. Then Mesozoic era, it is divided into Triassic, Jurassic, Jurassic period. Then the Cenozoic era, Broadly, it is divided into Paleocene, Neocene, and the Quaternary period. Okay, then this period it is again divided into smaller units. So this Paleocene it is divided into three epochs: that is Paleocene, Eocene, and Oligocene. Then the Neocene periods it's divided into two: Miocene and Pliocene. Then the Quaternary period it is again divided into two. box that is the pleistocene and holocene so this epoch it tells us some story so in uh, from uh, means if, uh, if we as we all belong to assam so that means in the northeast india whatever the sediments we are getting so what it means uh, this uh, assam it is famous for oil and natural gas okay so that sediments that sediments they are all belong to means the older sediments we are getting from paleozoic time then the eocene eocene miocene so basically the sediments age of this uh, means in assam basin it's basically starting from the paleocene sand okay so this box uh, so this is all about this geological time scale it you buji pai sir Yes, okay. So, any more question? If you have any further questions, uh, you can. drop in a chat chat box in the meantime we'll proceed the program forward and in the further the future purpose uh, i will share your uh, speakers email id so that if any question arise during the, uh, in this topic you can directly mail it to the resource person so so the 
session for the first session on the topic mass extinction events delivered by Dr. Meghali Borwa has been over and the questions has been given and the question put forward has already been given to the answers and uh, we'll move towards the validatory session. Thank you, Dr. Borwa, for enlightening the students and the participants the overall topic of the uh, extension and mass extension process. How does it take place and at which point the mass extension has been and right now we are also living in the six mass extension. And uh, all this extension is related uh, to due to the climate change. And it is through this uh, presentation, the message has been put forward that to every individual to step forward to uh, mitigate the uh, climate change in a global scenario. Global scenario. So my dear students, uh, as I have already said that the email ID will be provided if you have all, I have any already, I, I have already given in the chat box. Okay, okay, you can take you can take it from the chat box, everyone. And to, uh, on 27th of this month, we will be in another uh, invited talk. Will That will be de delivered by Dr. Ramjan Ahmad. And he will be talking about the phylogenetic tree, how the construction will be done. And, and that topic is equally important. And there is a relationship between this topic, today's topic, which has already been delivered. So how, how all the organisms we have developed, we have uh, evolved, sorry, not developed, we have evolved from a single cell uh, and uh, evolved towards the multicellular organism. So how these organism, right from the single cells and right from the, uh, the developmental and evolution period, how those all those organisms are connected and interrelated. So how closely the species are related, that will be defined and that will be talked on that, uh, on that special day, on that is on 27th of uh, March in this month. So I request all the participants to uh, join on that uh, day also, so that you have to gain much knowledge regarding how evolution and how we and all the spaces are interrelated and correlated with each other, so that we can uh, make a phylogenetic and relationship tree. So I thank you once again, uh, Dr. Borwa, for giving us your valuable time and enlightening us with your uh, very interactive session and informative knowledge uh, to our students. I hope the students has uh, gained knowledge by your talk. And, um, and I thank our principal sir for giving us the opportunity to, uh, to organize such programs and we are expect and also my dear students and the participants and the uh, faculty members of our department uh, for organizing such and uh, lecture series uh, through our students can interact with the experts and clear their doubts. So thank you all once again. Uh, thank you, Dr. Borua. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. With this, I would like to end the session. Good night, everyone.